Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to change the seal on the IMS bearing cover on an M96 engine. It's underneath this cover just here and I've cleaned it up at the moment so it does look quite clean but it has been leaking so the cover needs to come off. I'll also show you the bearing whilst I'm in there. As you can see the engine is already out of the car and upside down on an engine stand which will make the job a bit easier for me. Um, you can do this with the, the engine in the car, the procedure is the same. So the IMS or intermediate shaft runs the length of the engine, so from here down to the other end. It runs inside the crankshaft carrier, or sorry, it runs just outside the crankshaft carrier, is driven from the crankshaft. There are three chains attached to it. There's one short chain at this end which drives from the crankshaft. Then there's a longer chain at this end which drives up to this head. You can see the chain in there. And there is also another chain, long chain down at, at this end of the engine, over this side, which drives this head. Now for each of these chains there is a tensioner to maintain the, the, the tension on the chain um, so that it can drive effectively. Now, we're not doing anything down at this end of the engine, so there's a tensioner which keeps this chain tight, which is just down here. See the tensioner just there. I don't need to do anything with that because we're not, we're not dealing with this end of the engine. However, at this end of the engine, there are the two tensioners there is the tensioner here, which is for the short chain which drives from the crankshaft. And there is also another tensioner here, which is the one to drive these cams. Now, before I go ahead and undo these tensioners, I need to lock the engine in position. So to do that, I have to get it to top dead centre, which I've done, and I've locked it there, so that stops the crankshaft rotating. I've also got the covers removed from the camshaft ends here and I've used a, a tool, it's actually a timing tool to, to lock that in place. So what that means is that when I release these two tensioners at this end, the this uh, chain is not going to be jumping because this end of the of the IMS could potentially move very slightly when the cover comes off and there's obviously tension on the camshafts due to the um, Know, due, due to all the valve gear that's trying to push against it. So by locking the camshafts in position, it's removing the force that's coming back onto the, onto the IMS. Um, and by locking the crankshaft, it should mean that when I remove the tensioners, it uh, nothing moves. So with those locked in place, I'm going to go ahead and undo these tensioners here. So this one here, this one here keeping them in the correct positions, noting that there are marks on them. When these are off, I'll also be changing the, the washers on them, so I'll, I'll show you that when they're off. And I'm also going to undo the cover. So that involves um, using a, a spanner and a screwdriver to undo the centre bolt and removing these, which I shall show you right now as soon as I've taken the tensioners out. I've now got the two tensioners removed. I've also cleaned up the surface face where this tensioner goes back on. If we look on the tensioners, you'll see that there's um, an O-ring on there and also an aluminium washer. I shall be replacing those before they go on. I've got the replacement O-rings for them already. And then that one again, see the, uh, the O-ring and the washer. So I've now got to remove the cover now that the tension is, so basically the engine's locked in place and the tension's been removed from the chains. So I'm going to first start off by undoing the centre nut. So to do that, 13mm spanner, and then I use a screwdriver to hold the centre still. So I hold the shaft still, undo the nut, um, and then I shall take the nut off. And when that's done, I'll be using a 10mm socket to undo these three bolts here. With those three off, then I shall gently uh, prise the cover off evenly on each side so that it comes out straight. I've now taken the cover off. You can see it here. 
that's the, the seal that I'm going to replace. I've had this engine out for some time, I've had the cover off before. I don't think I've replaced the seal, so I'm going to change it anyway. So there's that, that seal there, seals against the outside of the crankcase there. The shaft there, which runs through the centre, um, runs through there. There's also an O-ring on there. Not sure if you'll be able to see that. It's basically on. Can't turn the light on. There's basically an O-ring that runs on the shaft in there. So I'm going to take that out as well to replace that. I've I've already popped the cover off the bearing because one of the problems with these bearings is that they they're a sealed bearing and they don't get extra any extra lubrication. The oil can get into them and wash the grease out. So I've popped the cover off already, and the the bearing spins nice and freely there's no play on it at all so i'm i'm happy that the bearing itself is absolutely fine so i'm not going to change that for the sake of it so i'll use a, a pick to get the inner o-ring out and i'll pop the seal off and then i'll, I'll show you those when they're out i've now got the o-ring off the shaft there it is i managed to get it out by using a a couple of small picks. These here. So there's a groove on the shaft, it's not easy to see. Um, so I've now got a new one new ones here. Just make sure that they're you know suitable for um, for use with oil, suitable for use at uh, at engine temperatures. Seven millimeter by two millimeter thickness on these. So I'm going to get that fitted onto the shaft with a little bit of oil on it and then I'm going to fit the new new seal onto here um, which is a Porsche part <coughs> so here is the Porsche part number on there um, so I'm going to put a bit of uh, put a bit of grease on get that fitted and then I can refit the cover okay so the new o-ring is now fitted in there I've also put the new seal on here, put a little bit of grease on it and a little bit of oil just down the end there to help the help it slide onto the O-ring. So I now have to refit the cover. It'll only fit on one way around. So if I place that on. Now it's important when doing this to make sure that the um, the area around the inside of the crankcase is all nice and clean, there are no burrs on it and that this slides on cleanly so that it doesn't push against the edges. Now the shaft, the IMS itself, can be pushed to one side or the other, depending on uh, exactly where the, where the crank is. So it might be that you need to move the crank a degree or two either side to get it to slide on. So I'm just going to do that now and get it slid into position in the correct orientation. You can see it's, it's not right there because the, uh, the bolts aren't lining up. Now I've got the cover back in place. It's important when putting the cover back on to fit this nut as soon as possible. So as soon as you see a couple of threads coming through, fit the nut and then tighten it up as you go along. That's because if you don't do that, it's possible to push the shaft um, into the intermediate shaft. And if you do that, you'll be in a lot of trouble. And most likely have to strip the engine down to do it. I've now finished refitting the cover. The three bolts which hold it in are tightened up to 10 Nm. I either use the new micro-encapsulated ones, which basically have a, a dry thread sealant fitted on the threads, or in my case I've applied some liquid thread sealant on them. So it's not a thread locker, it's a thread sealant. It's a slightly different thing designed to, um, designed to seal up the threads, because otherwise oil can get through, because the holes do go straight through to the crankcase. The centre nut, I've also fitted a new one of those, as that is a locking nut, so I want to make sure that's working correctly. The outer three bolts, these three go up to 10 Nm, and the one in the centre to 11 Nm. I've also put new O-rings on the two tensioners, so these are, are now ready to tighten in as well. Um, you could use a new, uh, a new washer on it. The washer's in very good condition on this, and um, the engine's not going to be in for very long. I've never had one leak when re reusing the washer, so I'm just going to refit those as they are, so they'll tighten up to 80 Nm. 
So once once that's done, I can uh, then remove the um, the locking tools and I'll be able to get the engine back together.